So if we sit here next year within this time, I will talk into the new F2 champion. That will be the goal at least. So uh, we'll be pushing for that. Mr. Dennis Hauger, great, uh, great to see you. Thank you, uh, first of all, for taking some time uh, for us. How are you doing? All good. Uh, back in uh, Norway now, having a bit of a break uh, for Christmas with the family and friends. Good to be back in the snow. A bit different from Abu Dhabi, where I were driving a few weeks back. But no, it's fun to be back home a bit. The race season is over. If you would describe your uh, season uh, in 2023 in a couple of words, what would that be? I think a bit of a roller coaster overall. So roller coaster, you know, uh, fun, um, but um, also frustrating. <laughs> I think overall, I mean, we've had some up and downs, a few wins, uh, but obviously not the way I wanted the season to end. You know, I wish we could be up more in the championship and and fight for that title. And I think in the beginning of the season, we, we really had the pace to, you know, advance up there. Um, but it was a bit of, you know, the first race, we had technical issues lost some points um, and then got crashed out in Australia. And there were a few of those moments which um, set us a bit on the back foot, I think. But otherwise, I mean, there's stuff we can be proud of and, and bring into the next season, of course. The season is over. For you as a racer, I always uh, ask myself, the winter break, is it something you enjoy or uh, do you always want to keep racing as a driver? I mean, sometimes uh, a small break is nice. When we have these sort of intense weeks where we back-to-back weekends, traveling a lot for a month or two, um, for sure it's a good to have a bit of a breather and just settle down a bit. But yeah, I mean, still, we're, when we're not uh, having a race week, we're trying to figure other stuff to, to do. Uh, if it's ice driving in the winter in Norway or, uh, you know, just doing simulator and, and working with the team on, on other stuff. It's always bits to, to work on, but... Um, I think it's good to have a bit of a break sometimes, but it doesn't really take long before you want to get back in it. Yeah, the season will start very soon, a couple of months. But looking back at the 2023 season, uh, what race or action stand out for you? What will you remember in a couple of years if you look back to 2023? I think as the, the first race uh, in Australia for F2 was, was there this year, uh, it was really cool, cool to win that first race. And, and be the first one in Formula 2 to, to win in that country. So that was really enjoyable and, and a cool track, which I've uh, looked at for, for the F1 races since I was a kid. So it was a really enjoyable moment for, for me and the team to get that first victory, victory of the year. A moment to always remember, of course. That track, uh, for me, uh, I, I play it on the game, but is it exactly the same? Is it just as what you saw on television? There were a few bits that changed actually that year. So... Um, some corners were a bit different. They have taken out the, the chicane in the middle sector. So there was a DRS section there suddenly. Um, and a few bits of the changed from curbs and stuff. So it was obviously a bit different. But, you know, in terms of the the excitement and the, the hype around the weekend, in terms of the people and the place, it was um, just as I imagined. So it was really cool to be there. A long travel, but uh, yeah, it was a really cool weekend overall. Would you describe that weekend as your highlight of the season? Nah, I don't know because I got crashed out in the race after. I think it could have been the best weekend of the of the year. I think when I was fighting for a podium in the second race as well, could have been two podiums up that weekend, um, but got crashed out. So that was a highlight. But again, a bit of a roller coaster ending it with a crash. So I'm not sure if I have a favorite weekend of of this year, but. Um, for sure, it's been a few good moments, but I think, as I said earlier, it's been a roller coaster, and some weekends have just been good and bad, and some weekends have just been bad. So, you know, that's uh, that's something to bring into the next season, trying to have that stability. Talking about stability, what are the, one of those weekends in 2023 you absolutely want to forget? Do you think, well, you know, I don't want to look back on that anymore? I don't know. It's hard to say. To be fair, I think. Generally, I think some of the qualifyings we've had this year hasn't been optimal and it's been a real struggle uh, at times. Uh, in the races, I think we'll always sort of come back. If anything, I wouldn't mind the Spa, I think, in Belgium uh, this year to, to be forgotten. Didn't have the best sprint race and, and the, the main race I got taken out and couldn't finish. So that was uh, a bit of an annoying weekend overall. Yeah, something to forget, obviously, but uh, we're racing there again next year. So 
obviously some things you got to bring on and, and improve from. And it could also be a motivation to do it better next year, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, um, all these ups and downs. I mean, it's just a, it's a learning curve overall, no matter the experience you have. I think there's always stuff to learn. So um, for me, it's a, it's a thing to bring into the next year and uh, always try to improve on. You talked about uh, stability uh, a couple of sentences ago. Is that the biggest uh, um, lesson you take from 2023 uh, for your third season in uh, F2? Overall, I think for sure, to, to be fighting for that championship title, you need to be always up there fighting for the points, fighting for the big points, but just know when to, to settle a bit uh, for one weekend and, and you know when you have the chance to get those points out. This year has learned me a lot about you know the beginning of the year and, and what we can really bring home in terms of points to get a good start to the season. I think that's going to be an, an important part for next year to just you know start the season on the right foot and, and really be up there straight away. 2024 will be your second season at MPM Motorsport. Can you point out um, what you've learned in the first year about the team and, 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 and how will you progress in this uh, in 2024? Yeah, to be fair, uh, the 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 relationship with the team has been really good. Obviously, going into a new era with the F two cars as well, there will be some new changes. Obviously, as the as the car is changing next next year, so um, going into with the team where I feel comfortable and we can work well together, I think is a is a strength we have together uh, going into the next season. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a good uh, thing to have had so far, I think, with ups and downs. And I mean, it's in these moments you learn the most about each other. So I think, you know, generally just throughout the year, we'll come together more and more and, and built up a really good uh, trust. So uh, I think that's just going to be a strength for next year. And you talked about the differences in the car next year. Um, have you already tried in the simulator uh, the, the new car and how does it feel? Um, no, we haven't. You know, it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to simulate. You know, for F one, maybe it's possible with the budget they have. But you know, for for Formula Two, it's it's a bit different, and we haven't actually gotten to try the cars yet. Uh, I think we'll have the first test twenty third, twenty fourth of January, where it's just like a, a shootout for just uh, one day to test the cars and see sort of data and everything to to simulate that. But you know, some stuff. On the cars of what I've seen looks different, especially the the aerodynamics. And then there's some similarities from this year's car. So it's obviously taking a leap forward, uh, but some things will probably stay similar in terms of the technical stuff. And then some people, uh, some things will sort of improve. So it, we will just have to wait and see how it is and uh, how it feels. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I saw that you uh, got to the podium in Macau. I thought you heard it a week before the race started uh, that you were uh, uh, racing. Can you explain to me how that uh, all happened? Yeah, it was quite random, to be honest. Um, I think it was on the Friday or Saturday, uh, the week before, uh, where I just were home back in Norway, uh, thinking the season was over almost. Uh, just one race to go in Abu Dhabi. And then uh, um, I got the call that Franco Colapinto was... Um, yeah, feeling a bit injured from from something earlier. Um, so they had an open seat and asked if I could fill it in for them. And I think it was like eleven o'clock in the in the night uh, where I got the confirmation. So four in the morning already. Next morning I flew to Amsterdam to do some uh, simulator work for a couple of hours only before I flew to China to to do the race weekend. So it was really minimal amount of uh, preparations. I haven't driven the car in two, three, two years. And, uh, you know, it's always a bit different. So, um, yeah, going into a track like Macau was just crazy. Um, my first time there, but yeah, I mean, it was so enjoyable. The track is awesome and the three car I really enjoy. And to be honest, it was, it was good to just get back in a car or, you know, sort of a series where I felt comfortable from earlier and could really show my potential straight away, even though I didn't know the track. So, it was uh, it was a cool moment to to come in so unprepared and just uh, yeah do the job we did in the end. With uh, um, a little uh, preparation time, you still got the second place. So is that something that you think about uh, next year? You want to be at Macau also and try to get the win? I don't know. You know, this year wasn't really planned. 
you know, there's uh, stuff to to focus on in Formula Two, and it was really cool from from MP to give me this opportunity in Macau, obviously, and it was enjoyable for both of us in the end, I think. But uh, we'll see. I mean, it would be awesome to go back, but it's depending, obviously, how the season goes, what the plans are for for the future. But uh, I wouldn't mind going back for for one more time. Can you explain to me? Uh, what's it like uh, to race on Macau on a legendary track? I mean, it's uh, super tight. I don't think I've uh, touched the walls so many times through a weekend. It's uh, small margins in really high speed uh, corners. You're sort of struggling to stay flat and you're pushing through it. So it's it's crazy, you know, the grip changing all the time. It's a normal uh, road on the all, all, all other weekends. So it was uh, really cool to uh, yeah to see how the track is. I know I've I've seen it on the races in the previous years, but uh, never managed to to go there. When I did F three, there was COVID, so yeah, it was just crazy. You know how tight the walls are and the and the battles that you know bring into one race. Everyone's just giving everything and not really caring about any points or anything. So it was uh, yeah coming down to one one lap and one race, and uh, it was really cool to be a part of. Not long ago, it was announced that you were uh, leaving the Red Bull development program and you will continue on your own uh, next season. Uh, what does it mean for your career? Yeah, I mean, in the end, I don't think it changes much. The, the goal is still the same. Obviously, I want to thank Red Bull for, for the years we've had together so far. It's been a, it's been a cool journey with ups and downs. Uh, but to, to be fair, you know, it, it just doesn't change much. I still have to perform next year. And if I do, doors can open and I'm not... Um, stuck in anything you know in terms of a contract or anything so for me it's just um motivation for me um to just you know keep at it i know if i do well next year i you know the doors can open so for me it's just um, um motivation to keep going now and just give everything into this uh this season coming up yeah the, the, the mission stays the same you have to perform right in the end you know when things go the right way things happen and opp- opportunities come so for me, it's just about staying on the mission I am at now and focus 100% on the goal I have uh, for next year, which is winning F, uh, F2. Without the support of, so, uh, of a junior uh, driving uh, development program, is it harder to reach your goals or, or is it still possible with a little bit more work? Or I think if you've never been in a junior program, it's obviously not as easy, I think, coming from a program. It's always easier to you know, get back in it if you do well. Uh, I've been half halfway out and in of Rebel twice already through my career in Formula cars, and always when I do well, I come back. I'm not gonna say that's that's what uh, is gonna happen, obviously. Um, but you know, the door comes open to not just Rebel but other stuff as well. And if you do well, you know, the opportunity the opportunity is there at least. So I've done my part if I manage to do it, and that's all I can do. So I will just give hundred percent to to manage that. If we then. Um... Look up on uh, 2024 uh, for a little bit. This couple of months, what are your plans? Are you gonna ice karting or something in your uh, in your holidays? Uh, it's gonna be a good Christmas now. A bit of a you know break uh, with family and friends, but um, you know already in the beginning of January, January we're starting the preparations. You know, getting back with the team simulator, all the prep work. So. It's not going to be the longest break, I think, but uh, it's going to be good to get maybe up on the mountains in the snow, ice driving with a car or uh, or a cart, and uh, yeah, just um, disconnect a bit, but still, you know, have fun with it. So uh, yeah, it's going to be good to have a break, but it's going to be even better to come back. Sounds uh, sounds very good. Finally, if you uh, were able to give the season a grade from one till ten, uh, what would it be? Probably uh, five, six. I mean. It's uh, not been what I, I wanted, obviously. Even though if it was at the max, it would still be 8-9 because you can always do stuff better throughout the season. You know, no season is, is perfect. So there's definitely stuff to, to improve. And hopefully we can uh, yeah, get that number up a bit for, for next year. So if we sit here next year within this time, I will talk into the new F2 champion. That will be the goal, at least. So uh, we'll be pushing for that. <laughs>